Good morning, Beth. Good morning. How are you today, Amber? I am good. How are you? Good. Are you ready to do some cleaning? I am. Although I'm not going to lie, I'm not always the best at cleaning, right? Well, I think I can tell from my um, that little opening screen that one of the things to list on my cleaning list is to clean up my Bitmoji and bring <laughs> it into the next season. I still look pretty wintry there. Right? I mean, it's springtime. I know that everyone else in the world has been cleaning their house like crazy. I have not just because of the small children that keep destroying my house in those settings. Um, how about you? Have you been, uh, you been cleaning away? Well, I have a list and in my life that is like half the battle. No, it's not. I make a list all the time and then I don't quite carry it out. So, um, it will be my list for June after we're done working, right? Like, well, then I'll have time to clean. We got a few people joining us today. We'll say hi to Crystal and Kelly and Jan. So excited that you guys are joining us. Yes, and be sure to ask us questions if you, uh, if you have specifics about what kinds of things need to be cleaned up. Because there's a lot in Google that could be cleaned, right? That's the truth, absolutely. And we're not gonna be here all day. We're just no. gonna focus it in. In fact, we thought we talked about five. We're going to talk about five things, five different kind of areas to give some attention to in your spring cleaning. And I love that Crystal's here because we're going to start out with Google Classroom. So I'm going to share my screen and take us to Google Classroom. So I've just been teaching a Google class with Crystal. And um, one of the things that happens in Google Classroom, it's a wonderful program. It's a fantastic way to connect with students, organize your digital life, your learning, all of that sort of thing. But at the end of the year, you need to do some work, a little work to get it ready to be put away for the year. Sort of like um, you empty out your classroom at the end of the year, your physical classroom in a normal year. So the, this is my class that I've been, uh, my, my class I've been working on. I only have two students, one of who is Grant Wood, but my class needs to be put away for this, the year. So when I am in the classes view, if I click on these three little dots here on the side, I get an option that says archive. And when okay. archive- Hang on oh, one second, Beth. Yeah. We are seeing your actual screen and not our Google Classroom screen. So can we, can we pull that over? Yes, thank you. Okay. I'm so, so sorry. I don't know what happened. There I just always love your picture of your pairs uh, <laughs> that you have on your screen about what I'm learning today. So I always kind of like look at that and think about those things about what am I learning today? So- And, and you saw my, did, well, you know, there we go. So now can you see my Google Classroom? I can see your Google Classroom now, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Technology has a way of making us all, it evens the playing field. We all are full of mistakes when it comes to technology. It happens to everyone, right? Absolutely. So back to my classes here, my Technology 101 class, I have three little dots here. And when I click on the dots, I have an option called Archive. And Archive takes that Google class and it puts it away and it closes out, it takes out all the students from my classroom. So I'm gonna show you where it goes because then in the fall, you can open up your classes. I just clicked on the three lines to the side you go to the bottom of the list where it says archived classes. And now it's going to show me any classes that I've archived. I can then restore it. I can make a copy of If I restore it, I have everything the way it was before, but no student work. If I make a copy of it, it may, I can then um, tweak it more. So I, I would play around with those two options to see which one works for you. You can always archive things at a later, at, as you go. I mean, Google lets you, it's pretty forgiving. So you can kind of play around with these options. I also like the idea, um, I think it was in a um, Casey Bell blog where she talked about at this point of the year, like you make a copy of that class and then you can have that set up as your template for the next year so that when you come back to it in August, then you have a place to begin, which I think is a 
pretty smart thinking. I don't know that I would have been that proactive thinking. It's a great, great idea. And, you know, we didn't teach in this world, so that makes it so different for us. The whole pra- the whole process is completely different here. But yeah, exactly. So um, that is our first little tip. We're going to we're going to sing the praises of, of Casey Bell and all that she does uh, with giving a lot of fantastic Google Classroom tips and other googly things, tips to everything. Yeah, she's a great resource to learn from to add it to your PLN, right? Absolutely. So our next thing is sort of about considering your own, your entire Google world. So I'm going to go to um, myaccount.google.com. And when you go to myaccount.google.com, it opens up a page which gives you sort of the big, huge, gigantic view of all the stuff that you have. So one of the things that we can do is we can go down here into the security area. And when you're in security, you can see um, what devices are connected to your account. So this is a place where you can say, all right, I don't have this iPhone anymore, and you can take it out of there. You can um, make sure that your the devices that you actually are using are the ones that are listed here. Like I see, I've got two iPhones listed here. I only have one iPhone. So it's time for me to do some spring cleaning as well. The other thing to look at on this page is this one right beside it. Again, I'm in the security option, third-party apps with account access. When I click on manage third-party access, it shows me all the different things that have connect, I've connected to my grant, my grant would, my work Google account. Some of these things I may not be using anymore and maybe I want to get them out of here. So this is just another place that you can do some cleaning up of sort of, I would say this is your, um, maybe your garage. Like it's the stuff that you use, it's really important, but gets kind of out of control. I also think about it too, like at least you and me, right? We're like, ooh, let's learn about this new thing. Mm, I'm never using that again. So I, this is the place to say, oh, what even was that technology tool that I explored for about 15 minutes and decided not to go any further? But still has all my information. But still has connected to your information. Exactly. So it's a great place to kind of um, do some exploring with it there. Now, I will tell you, I, I don't have little kids. I only have big kids in my world. So this is the kind of stuff I do in the evening when I'm sitting on the couch with my computer in my lap when my husband usually is watching sports. But it's the kind of stuff that is not a very a high priority, but it is it does make your world better if you spend a little bit of time working on it. Hey, uh, Beth, we did get a question from Colleen. Um, and I just want to kind of chat about this with you for just one second. So she asked, no need to archive if we're just storing resources in our Google Classroom. How do you feel about that? I, I would agree. I don't think that there's a need to archive if you're not using, I think the whole goal of archiving is to get the students out. Because if you just, if you leave that class open, those students that are in that class have access to that all the time. Like, um, and so it's a way of sort of shutting the doors to the classroom so you can reopen the doors in the fall. But if it's just for resources, yeah, I think, I don't think there's a need to archive it. You can keep growing it. That's exactly what I was thinking too. And I really like the way that you uh, talked about the open door and closed door with the students. I think that makes a lot of sense. When, when Google was new, I was working with a teacher and at that point it didn't even have a delay feature. So when you made the assignments, if you pushed assign, automatically the students got them immediately. And so she kept having students that would contact her and say, do I have to have all this homework done? She'd send it out like on Saturday. And <laughs> so there's this confusion. Right. And then we also discovered at the end of the year that students could keep contacting her through the summer because mm-hmm. we didn't archive the class. So it's just a good thing to think about how do you move kids into the next world? Absolutely. All right. So we did classroom and we did main big Google. So where are we yeah. going next, Beth? Let's go to email next. Okay. Um, <laughs> so my email inbox, I'm glad we're not showing it. It's embarrassing. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm going to share my screen again because I'm going to be brave and show you my Gmail account. Are you seeing my Gmail? 
I am. That, I'm going to just ask that question now every time. I think that's fair. I'm using two monitors and life gets weird when you have two monitors sometimes for me. Okay, so this is my work Gmail account and um, just a couple things about it. You'll notice I have two emails here, one actually from Amber and another one from Jonathan, who is my coworker, that have these little labels. I've set it up in my Gmail account. So when I get emails from specific people, there's already a label attached. It makes it easier for me to eyeball it and see which of these are things that I may need to attend to immediately because that's my, uh, my coworkers that I want to look at right away. I also have, um, I'm gonna close, click this little carrot for unread here. And I have a couple of, um, these are labels and you can use priority inbox um, is a way of organizing your Gmail so that you can um, sort easier. So all, the all of the emails I was getting that had to do with the virus, I would add a label called virus and they would automatically go in this little folder that I knew I could deal with them all in that folder. That's one of the ways I organize my, my inbox. Now, my inbox is not at zero, but it's pretty, I have only a few, I only have 22 unread emails today. And my, all the rest of the emails in there is 577 that I haven't labeled or moved or done that. That's pretty good for me. I am not a, 200 emails in my unread. I can't deal with that. I try to zero the unread part out every day. But one of my problems is what do I do when I look at an email and I'm not going to deal with it right away? So like this grocery list, I actually set myself a grocery list so I wouldn't forget. Well, uh, Richard Byrne has this great free technology tips for teachers, had a great suggestion this week. This is kind of a new thing. I don't know. I just noticed it. Have you noticed this little cute little checklist icon there? I, I this have. Is new yeah, me. but I've never played with it. It's because it's no. right next to the snooze button. And that exactly. makes me nervous sometimes. So when you open an email, you have these additional sort of options. And one of them is add to tasks. So if I click on that, it's going to move my email into my tasks list. So what I've started doing is adding my my emails that I have to deal with right away into my task list. This becomes my to-do list for today in email world. It's really been a helpful thing because when I click on this, if I, I'm going to go back to my regular view here, I click on my grocery list, it's going to open up that email again, and then I can deal with it right here. Which is really an, an interesting view because I never use task. There's other things that I'll do to kind of help me make a list, but maybe what I need to be doing to start cleaning out my inbox is just having a daily task list of my emails, maybe separate from my regular to-do list. And I've, I've tried that. I mean, I've, that's what I've been kind of working on. Um, I'm very guilty of looking at an email on my phone and then it skips out of the unread and it skips down here into the abyss of everything else, yes. which um, I need to be real careful with. So that's where I, um, my tasks, adding it to tasks has been really helpful for me. Any other, do you have any other tips about your, I mean, we deal with email a little bit differently. We do. Yeah. Um, I do definitely do the priority inbox like you talked about, and I have a section of just to do, but I'm not going to lie. I, with everything that has been so crazy lately, I just put it in there and I come back to it when I can. And it's been growing and is a little scary in there. So maybe having it off to the side. So it's always in my view rather than having to scroll down because my an email that's coming in is becoming a little overwhelming. So that might be a good cleaning tip to try. I'm, I have maybe got to inbox zero once in my life. Um, and it was an amazing feeling, but it is, it is like working out, right? The keeping of your email inbox is like working out. You gotta do it every day to clean it up. That's really true. My, my problem is I tend to make a bazillion labels. Mm. So I add labels and I are, I move things into my labels. So then by the end of the year, I end up with 50 different categories. So one of the things that I did last year is I went through my email and I moved, I just made a label that was called 2018, 2019. Mm. And then all the stuff that was for emails from schools, from work that was last year's, i moved into that label. And then it's still in my email. So if I need it, if I want to search for something from that person, it'll still come up, but it's not in this mega list. 
So that, that, feels- that was another helpful organization thing for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's a really good point. And I think that kind of addresses a, a question that Crystal just asked about what do you do with zillions of emails before that are just sitting there or maybe from previous colleagues that are retired. So maybe just kind of having a year folder that you just put it all in, they yeah. would still come up if you did an email search. Um, but just to do a massive clean out, that would be, that'd be really good. Um, and Jan just asked, whatever happened to the place where you could go to the category of who it's from that used to work well for me to be able to delete people. <laughs> that, that, that question makes me smile, Jan, cause it makes me think, oh, I'm just going to pull up Beth, delete everything Beth ever sent me. <laughs> you can do that. That's very true. Especially if there's someone who's maybe moved on. Um, I honestly do know. I don't even know. Have we, I don't know that I've done that. Can you pull up your email again, Beth? Um, and then they did recently add that those new features in Gmail where you can see, um, like if you click on an email, maybe if you click on one from, yeah. So from somebody else, like you used to be able to get like those smart buttons across the top. Yeah. And Um, I, I think, I think, is it when I search, if I search for one, search for me. Here we go. Yes. So when I search for Amber, I get I get an email. I mean, I get the list, but I get these smart buttons. So if I say from Amber Bridge, I wonder if then you could just click the little box up at the top where you're selecting all and hit delete. I'm not going to do that, Amber. <laughs> I'm going to honor that I have 50 messages on this page from you that I'm not going to delete. But I, I think that would be one way that you could do it. Because as soon as I delete, as soon as I click that box, then I have a trash can. Yep. So that could be a way for Jan to do that of, of getting rid of everything from one area. I know that I'll go through that in my personal emails, especially if I have a vendor that emails me a lot. I'll just search for that one vendor and kind of wipe out all those promotional emails at once. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I but also you... little buttons are really nice. I think like the and what time frame, uh, yeah. you know, having having attachments, things like that. That was a really nice feature that Gmail added in. I agree. I just don't always remember exactly where it's at. Yes. One of those the truth things. is we could do a bunch more about Gmail because there's a lot of things. I mean, like I, I didn't show my list of all my, you know, my more, I have a bazillion labels and my labels are out of control, but I will clean them out as, as this year ends and I will move things. Um, I do that. I do that yet each year, but what, what the truth is that our, our email account has also become our kind of paper trail. So sometimes you need to go be able to go back and find like a series of emails from people. So not, I don't want to delete them, um, but I want them there, but I just don't want them in my inbox. That's the whole archive feature again, exists in Gmail too. So just archive it. It takes it out of that. It'll still come up if you do a search. That search button is, or search bar is super powerful, especially as we transition to our next Google Clean up yes. area, which is the one that everybody asks about. Dun dun dun! Your drive. No kidding. And my drive, I'm just gonna say, is out of control. It's always out of control. Um, we, Amber and I, have done several different Google um, sessions for people on organi- organizing your drive, and you can see the remnants of some of those. Like I have numbers in front of folders, so they get to the top of my list. But like this folder is April 2020. That was all kinds of stuff I needed in the month of April. So that's done now. So part of cleaning out your drive is actually looking at your folders and figuring out if the stuff that's in the folder is still things you need there or does it need to be moved someplace different? So kind of giving yourself a chance. I mean, honestly, this is my junk closet and it's going to take me some time. I'm going to probably end up on lots of little side journeys as I go down this path, like you do when you clean out your junk closet. But the end result is really helpful. And I think that coming into a new year, we really want to have that. Using colors is an important, is a, is a helpful thing. Um, there are... I also think that we should like send a warning to, like, I know I, that we've done some of these sessions in the past where people get real delete happy and with, I think there's one thing to get delete happy with emails, but it's a different thing when you delete things out of your drive that may be shared with others, right? 
Yeah, that's that's a very, very good point. I mean, the truth is I rarely delete things from my drive. Do you are do you delete very often? No, I don't. Just because, especially if you're a Google for education uh, school, you have unlimited storage. So right. it really, even though it may be messy, we don't need to worry about how much space we're taking up. So one of the really great tips that, and I, where did you hear the archive tip? I'm not going to steal your, your, oh, gosh, that I was feel- fantastic. Well, I mean, you we you also share that in email, and it also works in Drive too. I think it was in a Casey Bell post. I'm, I'm I believe of just creating one folder from for your 1920 school year and pulling everything in there, and then you all those folders just become one, and so it's still in your Drive, but it's just hidden behind a little mini room, or maybe you shoved it into a new junk closet that <laughs> just has a, a different door, so you don't have to see it. Which, though, I mean, I do it a little bit differently that I say, okay, <clears throat> I do a lot with blended learning, so at the end of the year in my blended folder, I will make a, we have a yearly folder in here, so all the things in this blended folder, like last year, everything from 19, will go into this 1921. So I clean it up inside a drive, but I've not thought about making a big drive folder that you put all the things into. I think that's kind of brilliant. It also, at the end of the year, like one of the things that I've, I've done is I've made a folder of other stuff, which I didn't know if I would need to keep or need to kind of deal with. Then at the end of the year, I pull things out of there and I I have reorganized things that way. Sort of like turning their hangers backwards and forwards in your closet that, you know, you shift the hanger when you worn something to figure out what you need to get rid of. I think you could do something a little bit like that. I wouldn't say get rid of, but maybe bury a little bit deeper in your drive. Um, A lot of the things we talk about is using colors, using numbers to organize. Um, You can add icons. Icons come before numbers, which come before words. So just that that thought about how do you organize it. The other thing, if you, I'm just going to put a plug for Priority Drive because this has really made a difference for me. Priority is new this year, and you can make workspaces in Priority Drive that are the things you're using a lot right now. So we've been working on a continuous learning collaboration with our um, digital learning team. These are all the docs that I've been going to over and over and over for continuous learning. So when I open my drive and go to priority, these are like my shortcut of things that I need. They're categorized. I can star things, but then they're just a long list. This gives me one more level of categorization, which really helps me. And they may be in different folders. So that kind of gets there. Okay. Anything else to add about drive? I mean, this is the biggie. And what I would say, the other thing is, if you don't do anything else, Go through your drive and look at all the things that are unnamed and Mm -hmm. figure out if those unnamed things are a thing or if you just created a doc because you wanted to put something on it and that can be deleted. But if nothing else, go through your unnamed things that are in your drive because the chances are you have a lot of unnamed, I mean, like I, I, or copies, that's another, you know, those things that come up over and over and over in your drive that's probably where you need to put some of your energy into figuring out all these loose things. This is the stack of papers that just keeps growing from mail. So I've got a bunch of untitled things here that I need to deal with. I'm gonna stop sharing my drive. Any parting words about drive, Amber? Um, No parting words about drive, but we did have a follow-up question about email. And so, Kim asked in email, is there a search statement that could actually bring all the unopened email to the top? <clears throat> so if you have, if you have your, or I'm, I'm going to share, I, I feel like I'm going back and forth between sharing. I'll go back to my, I'll share this again. Um, if you set up your email, I, you set up your mail to be like my mailbox is set. So my unread stuff is first. So I have it categorized that unread is at the top. Um, I also, I mean, honestly, I sometimes will look at something and I will make it be unread again so it stays at the top. You do that, that is in your settings features. So in settings, you have an option to, if you do your inbox, 
you can decide what comes at the top. Yeah, so, so just that little gear and then go to your inbox settings and then you can play you can around. You do unread it. first. That will, if I do unread first, it's going to take out my little folders, which is fine. I can show you that. And then it just has everything unread is going to be at the top of my inbox. And everything that has been read is everything else is down below it. So these are all things that have been opened. But the stuff at the top is going to be my unread. That is a lifesaver, I would say. If you don't do anything else, gear, settings, inbox, uh, inbox, and make your unread be the top. I would hundred percent agree. I the problem I think that why my inbox gets scary is because I only look at the new stuff. Because if I open it, then I and I don't archive it in that moment, then it just goes to the bottom, and I rarely scroll, keep scrolling to see it. So one of the things about that I do often is I will go back, I'll open it, I'll click on my three dots and I'll mark it as unread. If I need to deal with it, then it pops it up to the top again. So that's my cheat. Instead of make, adding a task list, which is what I'm doing now. What I used to do before is just keep popping it to the top so that I can see it up there. Um, Any I'll other- that I'm gonna drop in the chat. Uh, the link of a presentation we've done before about organizing your drive. Um, just kind of those tips that we really quickly went through. If you want to dive in or think a little bit more about each of those, you can access that presentation in the chat. And so, so let's go into our last thing, right? Yes. Our final thing is called Google Takeout. And um, Amber's going to add a link to a video by Eric Kurtz. Google Takeout is sort of like a magic product. I'm not going to lie. And if you are leaving a school, leaving a district, and you want to take with you things that have been in your drive, you can go through, you, you set it up in Google Takeout. So you click on what it is you want to take, and then you put in your alternate email address. So Amber and I both left a district. We you had it signed into that with that district email. We can change it to either our personal or our, our new work email. You do get Google Takeout. It makes a little folder and it automatically moves it away. It's like amazing. I, the first time you told me about it, we were in district and I was like, you can just get all of it out at once. That is truly magic. And, and it's, it's not just drive. It does email also. Like it does all the things. It I does all check, the things. You check all the, the apps you want to pull your stuff out of and it pulls it through, which I think for especially, I mean, good, good gravy, everything that the high school seniors have been going through this year and not being able to deal with or if they want to be able to pull things out of their school Google Drive before they go on to college, maybe they might want to reference some of those things. Um, Google Takeout is the way to, to go with it, a way to look at it. It really is. The, the other thing to think about is if you're leaving a district, there is transfer. And in that, <clears throat> that first Google account where we talked about myaccount.google.com, you can transfer ownership of things using that as well. Because if you created things in, like if I, what I created in Grant Wood in my drive now, if they would close down my account, all the docs that I created are also closed down. Even if it's a doc that Amber's using, if I created it, it's gone. So that transfer of ownership is also available. So thinking about how we also get ready to move from one place to another place is an important thing in our Google world. Absolutely. Any uh, of yeah, I was just trying to look. Uh, so I did, um, people asked some questions about where can I learn more about Google Takeout. I did stick a video in the chat from Eric Kurtz. Um, and, or you can just Google Google Takeout. Um, I've also found um, different articles that all do step-by-step. -step. Uh, Eric's video is really nice and it's, I think like four minutes long and it gives you the overview of it. It's really a pretty simple process. And Eric is a ed tech I mean, like he's working in education technology in a school district. So he is trying to simplify the process as much as possible to share with his own staff. So it's really user friendly. Yeah, I would say that uh, he would be also another amazing person to add to your uh, personal learning network. If you don't already kind of pay attention to him, um, then you should, because he does really good things about classroom um, and his videos are usually, he updates them frequently, so. Yeah, and groups them. So yeah. they're like a whole playlist about Google Classroom, whole playlist about Google Meet, a whole playlist about whatever these things sort of things are. Yeah, 
Yeah. I'd also say, you know, if you have specific questions, you can reach out to any of your digital learning consultants at Grantwood. We are very willing to help. Um, and if we don't have answers, which I often don't have answers, but I can work to find answers for you. So feel free to reach out to us if that is also helpful to you. And really thinking about, we just shared five ideas today, um, but there's so many different things that you can do to clean up your Google as well. Um, we're super happy that all of you joined us uh, today uh, with our online outreach. We're gonna be doing um, one more online outreach uh, this year. Uh, it'll be next week. And I'm gonna actually drop the link to our online outreach schedule into the chat. <clears throat> Um, we've got a couple of, uh, notes here, uh, to, sorry, we'll say real quickly, the next one is about celebrations, uh, and kind of reflecting on this year, uh, and having some conversation about, uh, lessons learned during this whole time. Uh, Gina, Lynn, and Corey are, um, going to be doing a great job with that next week, as well as kind of previewing some more resources that we'll be releasing, um, to you guys then. Uh, there were a couple last questions here, Beth, that I okay. will see if we can um, do here. Uh, the icons on the right side, can you, from Crystal, this might be a side question. The icons on the right hand side, can you edit them, add new ones, or remove them? Um, I'm kind of wondering if she's talking about mail or if she's talking, I bet she's talking about that little skinny sidebar, don't you think? Oh. Yeah, the, the truth is, so you can um, you can add, I mean, there's a plus that you can add more, you get additional add-ons, um, but those add-ons, there's not a lot necessarily. Um, but if you have, uh, I don't know, I, Zoom is one of the ones that we have in ours, that's pushed out like at the, at the top level. There are some other add-ons that work inside of Gmail. And if you just click that plus, it'll open the marketplace and then you'll be able to have, you'll be able to look through that. I don't know that you can, I don't think you can change what is there, but like calendar keep and tasks are just the ones that are automatically there. But then there are a few others that you can add on that might be helpful to you. If you look through the marketplace. And if you go like all the way down to that bottom of that skinny bar, there's actually like a little arrow arrow. And I think if you click on that, it'll hide it if that yeah. does bother you um, or if those images, um, yeah, going forward. Good. So, yay. All right. Well, we hope that we helped a little bit, um, help you think a little bit about spring cleaning your Google world and um, good luck as you reorganize and put this very memorable year to sleep. No. So join us next week. Uh, I didn't say the day and time. So Thursday at 8.30. Thursday at 8.30. Thursday, May 21st at 8.30. Join us uh, again or join Gina, Lynn, and Corey to talk about kind of lessons learned. We definitely would love to hear from you guys in the chat. Light up that chat next week to hear how you guys have been lessons learned from the educator view <laughs> of yeah. all of this COVID stuff and really flipping education on its head. So we want to know what you guys have really taken away from this. That's for sure. And thanks for joining us this morning. We appreciate your joining us and chatting with us about all things Googly. We yeah. could talk Googly forever, couldn't we? We probably could, but you know what? It's a beautiful day outside. So we need it's to time. Keep it and it's Friday. It's Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.